In the 1950s, they, Brazil started to train in a particular a way. They stumbled on a tool, okay, that helped them, that helped in that development process, okay? They found a way to increase their learning velocity, and they were unaware of it at the time. They stumbled on this thing, okay? And the, and the tool was this game of futsal. How many people have heard of that? In Portuguese, it's called soccer in the room, right? It was, it was invented by a Uruguayan coach, and it was a training tool. It, it was a rainy day training tool. So when they couldn't, they couldn't play soccer because the weather stunk and it was raining, they would bring it inside and they would play this game. So what is it? Number one, it's regarded as the incubator of the Brazilian soul. It's taken on a life of its own. Kids play it in the neighborhoods and at the soccer academies. Ages 7 to 12, they play on average three days a week. Top Brazilian players play thousands of hours of futsal, okay? This guy here, Janino, he's a great Brazilian player. He never kicked a full-size soccer ball until he was 14 years old. He's one of the best players in the world. Players in this game touch the ball 600% more often. Think about that. Think about that from the age of 7 to 15. If you, if you put players in a circumstance where they touch the puck 600% more times, do you think they would be better puck handlers? I mean, it's, it's pretty, it's, it's really interesting. That's, that's Brazilian soccer. That's that little game of futsal that took place because of the environment and the culture that, that's in Brazil. Does that remind you of anything? Does that game remind you of anything? Like, take it to our sport. Nothing? Small area games, street hockey, informal settings, right? USA Hockey's whole small area game initiative, okay, is based on this premise. And it makes sense. I'll give you an example. There was a, there was a guy, and he was an elementary school teacher in Leeds, England. His name is Simon Clifford. He went over to Brazil. He was also a soccer coach, loved soccer. Went over to Brazil for a year on his own dime to study what they were doing. And he thought he was going to see these soccer academies with these big green soccer fields and strength and conditioning programs and this, that, and the other thing. And what he saw was a poor country that had no money. And he saw kids playing in between apartment buildings on dirt floors or concrete. And he saw them playing this game of the ball that was half the size of a soccer ball. And, and it was like an aha moment for the guy. So he goes back to Leeds, England. He, he, he taught at a uh, Catholic elementary school. He took a group of 10-year-olds and he started, he started to apply this process. At eight, and they laughed at him in England, all the soccer gurus. At age 14, okay, his team beat the, the Scottish national team and the Irish national team in the U14 level. Four years later. So there's something to this, right? For me, there's, there's really something to this. When I, when I was reading about this stuff, it was just jumping out at me that, that, you know, when I think about what's going on and what USA Hockey's trying to do with their ADM model as far as an age-appropriate approach and that, that small game initiative, and there's a lot of resistance to that small game initiative because people don't understand the nature of the game and the skill circuits that are required to be good. That's what small games do. Okay?